Coming up, Lunatic repairs headlights the proper way. I ate a sandwich. Ah, oh, the meat is so good. And a beautiful dog. Hello and welcome to M539 Restorations. And I have a hoarding problem. I have cars, many of them as you can see. And that's just inside. A while back, I did say I'm not gonna buy any more projects, and I didn't, I didn't break that promise. Although I am gonna break that promise this Sunday when I buy that M5. But that car is crashed, it doesn't count. A while back, incredibly nice subscriber and Patreon, Timo, reached out and offered me a free E39 Touring Individual. And free, well, that is a very good price. So how can I say no, I'm only human. Timo and the E39 are located in the town of Brunswick, which is three and a half hours away up north from Frankfurt. And here's the kicker, the car, it runs and drives, it's registered, it has valid tooth, MOT, so I can drive it back. That's the first on the channel, proper mini road trip where I can actually drive the car from the place I got it back to the dojo. I always wanted to do that, fly out to Spain, Italy, wherever, and drive the car back, but all of the cars that I buy, they're slightly broken. So I'm quite excited about that. Can't wait to meet Timo in the car. So now I'm gonna go home, change into something more presentable, hop on the train and let's hit the road. Good morning and welcome to a very brisk morning of Frankfurt. It is 8.14, three degrees Celsius and we are heading to the train station to catch a train. Oh, now it's four degrees, perfect. Already feels warmer. City center, Frankfurt main station. From here, we need to catch a bullet train to Hanover, and from Hanover, another train to the Helde, where Timo is located. Don't run in front of a tram. Why? Gleis 8. Got my cup of James. Just need to wait for the train. There's the bullet train, but that's not ours. Bayer. Mainz Hauptbahnhof, departure 908. Today from platform 19. Hanover Main Station. The train is here. This is a slow one. Still expensive. Yeah. Well, we arrived in Fehelde. On a side note, I gotta pee. I think Timo is supposed to wait for me here. Or well, maybe I'm supposed to walk to him. I don't know. Is that yours or? Uh, no, from my best friend. From your best friend? Yeah. Ah, there you go. White. Good rims. Manual, of course. Yeah. Really nice Blue interior. Blue. Yeah. Blue and white, it goes well. But that's the yeah, E39. E39. Touring. PE E528. Very good plate. Yeah. Very good I plate. I was so happy to get this. But I always wanted touring. I never had a touring. I had like, I don't even remember how many, five, six, seven, eight of E39s, mm. but never touring. They're really cool cars. Car. Really, really cool car. that orient blue orient blue yeah uh, an individual interior look at that interior that is beautiful look at that wood trim and blue interior that's also quite rare what's this button for uh, <laughs> that's from the pre 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 owner a starter button you uh, have the key and press the car and boom really yeah <laughs> that's peculiar <laughs> oh man Lovely. Headliner in good shape as well. Oh, thank God. No sunroof. That is awesome. And this is June 98 is for, uh, for what I saw. So this is what you told me, the trunk needs to be replaced, yeah. right? Yeah. It's typical for the touring. They always rust around here. It's an original 
BMW tool. Holder, ja, stick. Ja, original holder. OEM Plus, look at that. Uh, 2.2 tons. Choo, I can tow projects now. Perfect. Yeah. Really good reason to keep it around. What's this? I don't know. Uh, for the cell phone here, you have. Um, oh, look at that. That is a factory option, huh? Yeah, really factory uh, came with a complete Nokia tool. Oh, wow. Uh, that's so cool. I never used it. It's, yeah. uh, but we're going to leave that because that's so ancient and cool. 90s. <laughs> yeah. Good times. Equally awesome from this side as well. These are good polish. I spotted this when we were walking in. These are Depot. Depot. My favorite. <laughs> Do you mind if I smash these? No, no problem. Perfect. Please, please, uh, Perfect. It it's the wrong hood badge, I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the badge is uh, from the Crash V30 for my father. Ah. I had it in my workshop. <laughs> and the old one was uh, gone. Yeah. Destroyed. No. Oh, it fits. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. M52, unkillable engines. Really good engines. That doesn't look stock. Oh, I changed the uh, head gasket uh -huh. in uh, January. Head gasket or valve cover yeah. gasket? No, head gasket. Head gasket, head gasket really? Uh, and uh, do some work on the runners here, new seals and new mm -hmm. uh, bearings. Oh man, what am I going to do now? Uh, There's nothing for me to do. Yeah, no, it, it needs some coolant uh, still. Yeah? Me, yeah, I don't know. I, then I need a new radiator because I... Uh, the old one was broken, of mm -hmm, course, mm -hmm. uh, and it's really bad cold start. Really, really bad. Really bad? Yeah. Uh, you start the car and it runs on three cylinders, I think, and you press the gas pedal one millimeter in, the car runs perfect. Huh. Don't, I don't know. That's interesting. But uh, it's losing coolant or the head gasket is still bad? Uh, I think it's burning coolant. Uh, so it's not like leaking out or something? No. Uh. no, no. Perfect. And here, here I thought I'm not going to have anything to do. so. No, Excellent. no, no, you, much work, much work. <laughs> Excellent. But do you think it's good for a drive? Yeah, yeah, I drove it to Hamburg and uh, backwards and... That's nice. Uh, it has oil leaks, of course. Uh, the, Mandatory? Uh, the oil pan. Yes. The gearbox shifts very nicely, but I would change the oil. Yeah, yeah, go through the car completely and everything. It's, um, thingy Power steering. Thing, uh, yeah. That's normal, you just replace the O-ring here and you're good to go. Yeah. That's brand new. Yeah, there's a radiator and the catus here. Mm, nice. Very good. So tidy car. The Basto? Yeah. The Basto. Yeah, yeah, for heating. Preheater. Does it work? Yeah, it, it works, but the, um, the remote control is unworking. You can start it from, ah, from, from the, the house. Bus. That's Original good. Original BMW. Yeah, that was really popular back in the day. And that's really cool if you think about it. Yeah. You got to go to work, whatever. The AC doesn't work, of course. No? Yeah. I filled it in, I let it fill up in... February, it worked one month. Gone, yeah, I will leak somewhere, uh, yeah. Condenser. Condenser or something, yeah. The fan doesn't work. No? No, no. Uh, the fan works, but I think the te thermal switch. Uh, is bad or something, yeah. yeah. But it doesn't overheat or anything. Yeah, uh, it's winter, Autobahn. Yeah. It won't matter yeah, that much in the way at home. The jacking points were fixed. That's yeah, amazing. It's a body shop uh, five kilometers from here. Out. This is antenna of some sort? Uh, that's uh, that car has three antennas. That's for the preheater. Uh -huh. That's for the mobile phone. But it has the shades. That's a really cool option. Look at that. That's really neat, and it still works. Vielen Dank, ja. Hi, hi. <laughs> hi. Playful dog. Yeah. Girl or? A girl, yeah. Rida. Rida. So Timo is a proper host. We got coffee, cake, and a beautiful dog. Beautiful. There's a beautiful house as well. Beautiful porch. So we're gonna start the E21, see how it sounds. There you go. Good old cars. It looks good in white, doesn't it? That is a nice car. Tidy interior, blue seats, and the dash that doesn't have any cracks. That's pretty rare. Hopefully mine will be like this as well one day. But it's nice to see one in good shape. Nice rims as well. Yeah. Let me just quickly show you this. The car has a Vibasto. 
and he has a remote for it. How cool is that? You press the button from your bathroom where you're taking a poop and the car is gonna heat up for you. So we can start it, see what it sounds like. Sounds good. Sounds good. This is a cold start. Uh, yesterday it was uh, not that good, huh? Not that good. <laughs> sounds great. So you've done the Venus as well. Yeah. That sounds way too good. Nothing from the exhaust. Nice idle. It's too nice. It's a individual stamp here. Yeah, individual technique. So Orient Blue and special interior. I really love the wood trim. What a beautiful car. We're gonna treat you right. What are these? 15 or yeah, 60? 15. 15. But look at this. No rust anywhere. This is typically where they rust. Oh, a little bit here. Well, not too bad. So no rust there. Incredible. Man, the engine sounds great. Yeah, normally not. <laughs> <laughs> just want to see. That's so much more space than the E46. It's huge. You can carry multiple bodies in here. Oh, the mats. The original yeah, mats. Yeah, the original mats in blue. Very nice. That's awesome that it was saved. Clean that up and pop it in. This is yeah, a spare wheel with an air compressor for the uh, self leveling. System. Nice. And self leveling works. Yeah, it works. Beautiful. Thank you again, Timo. Have fun with it. I will. Awesome. Thank you so much, Timo. Yeah. All the best. We'll be in touch. And Turn the ignition on and press the start button. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Let's try that. So, ignition on. Okay. Oh, you have to hold it. I can't yeah, believe that's a problem. That's a problem. And you push the gas pedal one millimeter, so cut sticky. And it's gone. It's gone. Don't know. I it's don't peculiar. Know. It peculiar, yeah. Yeah, uh, the DME no codes. Uh, I don't know. I bet you it's something stupid, no sensor problem. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Manual seats. I think it's uh, sport seats. Yeah, they're sport seats, yeah. yeah. Really nice seats. Thank you. Here we go. First ride in the new E39. What a nice guy. Timo is, is an awesome guy. Really nice hospitality and he gave me a car for free. Been a while since I've driven an automatic. So, haven't driven an automatic since I sold Project Dubai. No, actually that's not true. E32 has an automatic. And you know what? This one isn't too bad. This is a good one. We're out of fuel, so we're going to a fuel station. 256,000 kilometers broken in you know so this is my first e39 touring never had one always wanted one i had a bunch of different e39s my first e39 was 2002 530i finished in toledo blue beautiful car i had that back in california and i think i put like 20,000 miles on it it was the best car i ever owned and it had standard styling style 42 BBS rims, original BNW rims, and that's what this car is going to get as well. 70 kilometers an hour, drives nice. I mean, I'm stoked. I'm absolutely stoked by Timo and this car. It runs and drives. Sure, it needs work, but it is a beautiful individual E39 Touring. I mean, look at this interior. It's beautiful. Can't wait to clean it up and make it even better. Sport seats. Oh don't like the manual function but you know saving weight because race car this isn't yeah the wipers are going to be a problem quick tip when you're driving through German villages always pay attention to your speed and respect the speed limit because they love to stick speed cameras everywhere and they're gonna get you do we have a radio we do Oh yeah, transmission is shifting beautifully. This trim is uber rare and expensive if you want to buy it used. So I'm really glad it has it has that. Can't believe someone put the freaking start button over there. Seems kind of pointless, but you know. Definitely gonna go for a different steering wheel. I hate this old style one. It's, it's like driving a bus, it's way too big. And I would like to have controls here as well. 
the horn is working. Love the sound of the straight six engine. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this car. Could always use a big touring that has a tow hook on the back. Always useful. The engine purr is like a kitten. See I keep wanting to go for a shift. Alright, we're gonna fuel up. See? Wanna press the clutch, but there isn't one. I'm gonna go with super plus. It should be 98. There is the price of fuel in Germany. 184 shillings. That's the final tally. 62 liters in. All right, we got go go juice. So we have 324 kilometers back home. Should be home just in time for dinner. Let's go. Forgot my phone holder. Really upset about that. But I keep forgetting stuff always. There's camera right over there. Why is there traffic? We're in the middle of nowhere. Take a fisherman. Here we go, going on to the Autobahn for the first time. Hello, Autobahn. Sport mode. Yes, yeah, sir. Cruises nicely at 130. So the E39. E46, E39, E38, those are my favorite platforms. Actually, I'll throw an E31 there as well. And if I had to choose one, it would be this, the E39. I think it's the best BMW ever built just because of everything. It is a brilliant piece of engineering. Starting from the outside, the lines are so classic. It is a beautiful car, pre-facelift, facelift, M Sport, where we want, they all look good. Then you have the interior where the quality is just awesome. I mean, look at this turn signal stock. It even hasn't been used. That guy must think I'm a maniac. But anyway, it sounds phenomenal. Like everything is just so well built. I mean, look at that. There's no rattles, squeaks or anything. It's just really well built. And then you have the options. You have so many options. You have sports seats, comfort seats, M5 seats. There's plenty to pick. And then there's the range of engines. What do you want? You want to pretend you're a farmer plowing a field? They have diesel power options, 2 liter, 2.5, 3 liter. They're all known for going many, many, many kilometers. You want a petrol engine? The smallest one, it's still a six cylinder, 520i. Then you have 528i, this one. Then you have the later one, 525i, 530i, which I had. And then you have 540i, the V8 version. Those are also great with the M62 engine. You can get them in automatic or manual. And then you have the King, the best car in the world, E39 M5. I just, I love this platform. It's just, it has everything you need. They make great daily drivers. If you're having a long commute, they're very comfortable, very reliable as well. All of these engines, they're really good. So yeah, I love the E39 chassis. And fun fact, the six cylinder actually handles better than the V8. 540i or E39 M5 because this one has a steering rack and those have a steering box and the E39 M5 still handles phenomenally but the steering rack is a steering rack and when you're in twisty roads this handles really good but this particular car the suspension is not that great I can feel that the front shocks are shot it's very bumpy and crashy over bumps and stops we hit something earlier and it just felt horrible now I'm comparing it to my daily E46 and the noise level inside and just the overall quality of everything is just a level above. And the thing that's kind of bugging me now with the E46, I like to drive fast when possible and there's no speed limit. And that car, it's screaming like crazy at 180 kilometers per hour. And there's a lot of wind noise vibrations and stuff. And this car, you can really push it and it's still gonna be stable and it's not gonna, it's not gonna be noisy. Oh, floaty, floaty. I think the biggest flaw with them is the rust. They have a few common spots where they love to rust. Jacking points, as Timo said, he fixed them on this car. Then you have the trunk on this car as well. So if you're buying one, just be careful of that. Uh, just go to Spain and buy one. There's my tip. Heading towards Castle. I'm loving the ride so far. It's very smooth and comfortable. Forgot how good standard E39 can feel. That's why I love my E39 M5 so much. 
it has every quality you need. It's stupid fast, it's comfortable. I do, on average, 240, 250, this 260 in that car and my girlfriend is sitting over there reading a book. No issues, no issues, it's stable. And we can still talk to each other. And that car is 20 years old. No speed limit sign, it's hit it. But, Baustelle, two kilometers, so let's not hit it. So much quieter, 180 than the E46, 190. There you go, 200. Feels good. Yeah, this is a better Autobahn cruiser at high speeds than the E46. I think we're gonna pull over at the rest stop, grab something to eat. Uh, the camera is too hot. The GoPro just shut off. It says it's too hot. From what? According to the speedo, it's minus 40 outside. How are you too hot? This is my homemade sandwich. This time from my kitchen. Not from the bakery. But what we have here is, yesterday on the Christmas market, I scored some black forest ham. Beautiful. Oh, it smells so nice. Then we have some butter on a classic dark German bread, some cheddar and pickles. Mm -hmm. That good. If you're vegan, better look away. Ah, the meat is so good. Sandwich dump. I lost the pickle. It went under the seat. And now it's time for dessert. Traditional German, of course. We have this. And this is not a donut. I remember specifically because an old witch was yelling at me in the bakery. Das ist nicht Donut, das ist ein Kreppel. So it's Kreppel. Wow, it's tasty. Filled with jam. I have sucre all over me. Wasser. Straight into Baustelle. The headlights are pathetic. There's a surprise. I need coffee. Hello. Let's go back. No problem. The thing doesn't have working cup holders. Oh, well, that one works. It's very dark in here, isn't it? There. Now you can see me. <laughs> We're cruising quite comfortably at 180, 190, 200. There's no problem with that speed, and it's 3,500 RPM. So that's already a huge plus over the E46 as it is right now. We have 222 kilometers to go. So far, everything is going swimmingly. I do like the E39 Touring a lot. It runs and drives, but there's a lot of, a lot of room for improvement, cosmetically and especially mechanically. And this is people why I passionately hate Vipo headlights. Just look at that light output. They're utter garbage. They're actually unsafe to drive at night because, I mean, it's like having two poorly lit candles and then you have a pair sitting in front of them. It's that bad. But not to worry, I have a tool in my garage that can fix them. Fix them real nice. And then you have a normal car over there. Look at that and look at this. I don't know how it's coming out on camera, but trust me, it's bad. That van over there has 16 million times better headlights than I do right now. We made it. We are back in Frankfurt without a single issue. The car performed brilliantly. It's not overheating. The temperature is exactly in the middle. The transmission is great, the suspension is shot, but I mean, the car drives really smooth. I like it. Thank you very much, Timo. And now I'm gonna go home, have dinner, and tomorrow we're gonna have a proper look at this thing and come up with the plan to fix it. Good morning, let's hear that cold start. Huh, interesting. It sounds like it's running on three or four cylinders, and then all of a sudden it just smooths out within seconds. That's an interesting one. That'll be fun to figure out. But this is now a serious competitor to E46 for daily driving. Because this is much more comfortable, much more quieter, much more stable at higher speeds. Did you know that the door handles are leather and in good shape? She went through a red light, cold-blooded. We're gonna wash the car so we can take a proper look at the condition of the paint. Hallo. Hallo Mann. Bitte rundum. Rundum? Mm -hmm. Mit innen oder nur von außen? Ah, uh, nur außen. Ja, na dann sind es 15 Euro. Bitte. Schönes Wochenende. Na, guys. Tschüss. Na, tschüss. 
Remind me to order new wipers. No, no he's going to blow those depot headlights away. Normally, when I'm in these things, I'm worried about scratching my rims. But in this case, not so much. Get ready for some foam and sponge action. This is a great for breaking your mirrors. Oh, bent that one already. There we go. All right, we're back in the dojo. Now that the car is clean, we're gonna have a quick look around it. The hood is in decent shape, nothing major, but there is some surface rust here and there. The emblem is obviously wrong, we need to replace that. The bumper has a massive scrape right over there. I don't know if you can see it, but that sadly can't be polished. But last night I found E39 Touring parts car in the same color, Orient Blue, and it supposedly has a rust-free trunk lid and bumper I think is in good shape as well. So I might go over there and just grab those two pieces and swap them around. The rims, those are not staying. I have different ones in mind. We need to replace this windshield seal here, but other than that, the windshield is good repaint the wiper arms then on this side some dings and stuff here just normal wear and tear the window trim needs to be sorted that rubber replaced then we have small rust starting here the rear bumper you know normal wear and tear nicks here and there the trunk lid as i said we're going to replace that then on this side there's a pretty big dent on the door over there and I believe PDR can take that out pretty easily. Then this scrape here needs to be treated too. And that's about it, honestly. I mean, for the age, the kilometers that this car has, I'd say this is pretty nice and acceptable. It's gonna make a nice daily driver. All right, now we're gonna pull it inside and have a proper look underneath. Just wanted to give you a quick update on Project Chicago, the Alpina B7, because I know you're gonna be curious. I've decided to sleeve the block, and as you can see, most of the parts of the engine are packed up and ready to go out. I actually found a guy who has really good experience with these particular blocks, N62, also the later ones, N63, as well as the M62, S62. He's done like loads of these engines, and he does Porsche Alucil blocks all day long as well. So he knows what he's doing, so hopefully he's gonna do a really good job here. And also the price is gonna surprise you. I'm also going to send him both heads, to be refurbished, crankshaft that's going to be polished and eight bags of this. It's not coke, it's just pistons. And I'm guesstimating it's gonna be about a month before I get all of the parts back. And I'm gonna give you all of the details, who's gonna do the work, how much it's gonna cost in the episode of Project Chicago. But realistically, that episode is gonna come out in month and a half at best, but probably two. I know I'm not patient either, but it's gonna be worth it because this engine is gonna be much stronger and more durable than before. Let's get it up in the air. So we're gonna start the tour in the back. The tow hook, aftermarket one, and it's not collapsible, which sucks. The bumper was professionally cut out. That's the exhaust. We have original Zach's shocks in the back. Those definitely need doing. The rear feels really bad. What else do we have here? The upper, how did that pass tooth? The upper guide link or the control arm is shot. Down there as well, the ball joint, it's gone. Probably refresh the brake lines as well. The ABS sensor needs to be sorted. But other than that, these bushings on the trailing arms look good. The diff bit rusty but dry not leaking so this is a German car so rust is inevitable and uh, Timo told me that the jacking points were repaired this one did have some work done to it and it's already starting to rust so that's great here as well that just doesn't look great oh yeah that's it's terrible yeah not a good job, it's already starting to rust. It's missing the plastic covers here, but I have all of those. Yeah, again, this one was repaired as well, but already starting to rust. And that rust there is why I don't buy German cars. There's just way too much salt in winter here. Then the transmission, a little bit wet. 
the gasket needs to be replaced. The GUI ball looks okay, it's not cracked. And we have lots of oil here. And Timo did tell me that the oil pan is leaking yeah, from there as well. And then in the front, so original Zach's shots in the front as well. And those are the old ones because it says Bogey on it. That company doesn't exist anymore. So definitely needs new struts. Control arm bushing, that one looks, I can't see it, but it doesn't look very good. Yeah, it's cracked, the thrust arm bushing. So we'll need those as well. Leaks here. That could be the steering rack or, yeah, it's not the steering rack. It's coming from the power steering reservoir. No lip, but they are vibrating on the braking. That or the thrust arm bushings. Plug there for something. That's probably the temperature sensor that's missing. The chassis rails look good. That doesn't have any signs of repairs. Even the belt looks good. This is not a ton of work. Fix the oil leaks, refresh the suspension. I mean, overall pretty solid. And what you expect from a car of this age, the biggest annoyance for me is obviously the rust and the way this was repaired. This is gonna start rusting again pretty quickly, year or two, if we're lucky, maybe three. And at this point, the car doesn't have a lot of value, so it's not worth for me to invest and have this properly repaired because it's it's ton of work to do it properly. So this is just to get it to pass tooth, essentially, and give it a few more years of life. So I'm gonna have to monitor and see how it goes on. If it gets worse and I start to like the car a lot, then. Obviously, I'm going to have that done properly. Under the hood, business as usual, M52, really good engine. Team replaced the head gasket on it, and the car is not overheating now, but he did say that it's still using coolant. So I have to see what's going on there. I'm going to start troubleshooting that in the next episode, see if it's something cooling system related or the head needs to come out again. Power steering reservoir and lines are leaking, easy to do. Need to replace this fan shroud and just maybe do a service on it, oil change, spark plugs, and I don't know if it needs anything else. He also redid the Vanos, so that's nice. Replaced the filters and it should be a nice running car. No Mayo. I mean, nice little car, nice individual E39 Touring that should be saved. So many of these cars got parted away over the years. It's ridiculous, especially in Germany. If you just search for part out for the E39, there's so many of them, pages and pages. This car suffers from a disease called depot headlights, these hideous looking things. But you needn't worry if your car suffers from the same vile disease. Now I'm gonna show you a proper and easy way to fix them. You only need one tool, this guy here, and this applies to any year and model depot headlights. You can do it in your driveway, garage, parking lot, doesn't really matter. It takes just a few seconds and by the end of it, they're going to be improved. So let's begin. You start by doing that. Then you take this and this. Apologies, you need a pointy end here. In this particular case, you might need an extra tool. There. I stand corrected. You actually need a different tool. I apologize for this inconvenience. Still real easy. Thinks a little bit. Excellent. And that's how you fix depot headlights. And if you're thinking, idiot, you just destroyed the headlights. I did, that's true. But there's a point to this story. Don't buy depot headlights in the first place. They are garbage. If you wanna buy OE headlights from Hella that have orange blinker, they're gonna set you back 200 euros per side and they're gonna last you another 15, 20 years. If you wanna get the white ones like these, well, they are no longer available brand new, but I did find a used set in like new condition, refurbished with new adjusters and everything for 180. So that's coming and we're gonna swap that in and then have good looking and good working headlights. 
I feel like this was a valuable lesson, so let's move on. So what's the plan with this fine automobile, I hear you ask? Well, I'm gonna try and not go crazy with it like I did with my E46. I just wanna make this a nice, usable daily driver car. So we're gonna replace the entire front and rear suspension because it's just awful, it drives horribly on bad roads. Service of the engine, clean up the interior, fix all of the small broken bits, and on the outside, just make it a lot more presentable. Different rims, of course, the headlights, the trunk lid, and maybe some spit and polish, and it'll look really nice. I'm really grateful to Timo for giving me this car. It is a beautiful car, Orient Blue individual touring with an awesome interior. I just, I really love it. So I'm also gonna try and keep it pre-facelift just because, you know, classic standard E39. I wanna have that in the collection, let's say as well. And it's gonna be nice having a huge touring with loads of space in the back and a tow hook. So if I need to tow something, I can. And that's a really nice thing to have. That would be all for now. I have no idea when the next episode on this thing is going to come. I'm just going to park it on the side and focus on all other ongoing projects at the moment because I can't start another one. The E30, that should be the next episode finally. And then the workshop build episode, that's coming pretty soon. We have the vapor blasting cabinet that just came in and Mark from Vixen is coming on Monday and we're going to do a little show and tell of that machine and I can't wait to start using it. So thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this episode and I'll see you very soon.